Yes, it's fair to say we all miss basketball, and in these times of trouble, we need unity. So in that spirit, every single fan base in the NBA is getting triggered today. From your team's worst moments, worst trades, worst chokes, worst draft picks, and things that still bother you to this day, nobody is getting spared from a good old roasting. Let's all join together for a good laugh. Well, until I get to your team. Triggering all 30 NBA fan bases is coming up right after this. Real quick, this is the second installment of Triggering the NBA, so if you think I missed things, well, I didn't. Let's get into it. Isn't it great that you have your best shot at a title since 1971 and of course the whole season gets go bared. I can't think of a more obvious sign from the universe that it's time to give up. Remember when you traded the rights to Dirk Nowitzki for Robert Tractor Trailer? Or when Dr. J literally refused to play for you? Ever since Giannis took the leap, all anyone has talked about is when he's gonna leave Cheese Town. That has to bother you. A squad that thrives almost exclusively on teamwork, chemistry, and leadership made the perfect move last offseason. Signing Jimmy Butler. How about getting roasted by Dan Gilbert for not taking a shortcut to the 2011 championship? Was that as bad as Mike Bibby was during those playoffs? How's things down there since LeBron left? Thank God you finally traded Reggie Jackson after five and a half seasons of apparently not realizing he was on your team. This squad is so hopeless that Blake Griffin is using this time off to transition full time to comedy, and he's about as funny as Joe Dumar's tenure as GM. Mouth guard. Looking out for me. A silicone shield? That what you be. Of course, nothing is more perplexing than signing Boban Morjanovic and John Luer to a combined 62 million when you already had Aaron Baines and Andre Drummond, who, like a roll of film, never developed. Ah, Cleveland. This pretty much sums it all up. With the worst attendance prior to the season getting suspended, you guys should be right at home when they have to play games with no fans in the crowd. Maybe if you did have fans, one would have pointed out that Jordan Bell's shirt was untucked earlier this year and you wouldn't have lost due to a delay of game. Man, CP3 is a snitch. Yeah, we all know you passed on Steph Curry twice, but in 2011 you whiffed on Kemba, Clay, and Kawhi for Derek Williams. Ah, the only team to beat out the Denver Broncos in the search for finding tall white guys. The Triple J experiment? Yeah, that didn't turn out bad or anything. Mark Cuban did agree to pay his employees when the season was suspended, which is a good gesture until you realize it's just an advance on their sexual harassment settlements. Do you think we have chill around here? Do I need to bring up 2006? The Spurs did the impossible and became the first Western Conference team to beat another Western Conference team in the finals by handing Kawhi Leonard to the Raptors. Speaking of that, you made him disappear faster than T-Max 13 points in 35 seconds. I'd bring up Tony Parker cheating on Eva Longoria with Brent Berry's wife, but that would be a foul like Mana Ginobili on Dirk in Game 7. Will somebody please get Terrence Ferguson a protein shake? You have watched star after star come to your dusty brick town only to have them disappear like our supply of N95 masks. Not just stars, MVP level talent. I guess a lot of people bring that up, so how about Dame Lillard doing this to you? What's the one thing that can wipe out a promising young nucleus with an upward trajectory? Congrats, you won the offseason, which was like winning the lottery and buying more lottery tickets. The already injured KD and the find a reason to get injured weirdo who asked what government means to you. I don't get how you can have a better team and still somehow play second fiddle to the Knicks, who are terrible. You know you're in trouble when the big selling point of your offseason is replacing Kemba Walker with... Terry Rozier, whose spaghetti and ranch sandwiches are probably the true origin of COVID-19. The Hornets picked up two twins, Caleb and Cody Martin, whose stats combined to make one NBA player. Don't worry about this rough period in your franchise's history. I'm sure ownership has a pragmatic, well-thought-out plan to return you to the glory of first-round exits. Trey Young should have no problem staying safe considered he stays six feet away when he's playing defense. 
Kevin Herter, who was drafted to match the team's uniforms, is having a solid sophomore season, but the Hawks are learning what their most recent pick, Cam Reddish, was really only good in college because all five defenders were focused on his Duke teammates. How about having the top seed in 2015 only to have the Cavs eject you from the playoffs like Al Horford in Game 3? The song named after Mo Bamba grabbed more boards than the real player his rookie year. Hanging on to the 8th seed in the Eastern Conference is a lot like riding a rusty stationary bike. It feels like you're moving, but you're really going nowhere and the wheels are probably going to fall off anyways. When you did make the playoffs, you had one of the least memorable blowings of a 3-1 lead to the Pistons in 2003. Winning that series should have been as easy as hitting a couple free throws, right Nick? Right Dwight? Congrats to Rudy Gobert, the Defensive Player of the Year who managed to hold the rest of the league to zero points the remainder of the season. Yeah, many have said that joke, but the dude did make it a point to mock this shit and now the world has no f***ing sports. You do not get a pass like Andre Kirilenko. If only Donovan Mitchell could score with the same efficiency that Gobert infected other people. It's assuring to know that you can put together the best roster in team history, grab the second seed in the West, and still manage not to be the best team in your own arena. Does Kawhi Leonard even have a pulse? I mean, the dude is emotionless even in the script club. Alright, that joke was uncalled for, so I'll just bring up drafting Michael Ola Wakandi. Garpax was the greatest tragedy to hit Chicago since the fire. Gar is out finally, which means they're free to hire an equally incompetent replacement. Since his airness left, the Bulls have been a mismanaged festival of forgotten glory and sadness. D-Rose gave you hope that was quickly shattered. Now butlerless, you dwell in the cellar like a diseased sewer rat, having missed the playoffs four years in a row. Oh, and guess what? Michael Jordan was subject to load management. Congrats, you lucked into one of the best prospects of his generation as soon as you managed to piss off the last one. The worst part about the unibrow leaving you isn't just that, it was you were dog shit with him. Now Zion fell into your lap and you had to wait nearly half the season for his gumbo infused knee to take the court and as soon as he shows promise, the league gets shut down. Just wait until it's his turn to leave. You got swept out the building by the Warriors and your answer for that? Signed, Carmelo Anthony. Something you will never live down. Drafting Sam Bowie over Michael Jordan. Or passing on KD for Greg Oden. I guess history repeats itself. Just like when you are venturing out to the Pacific Northwest and you contract dysentery, aka Brandon Roy's injuries in liquid form. Hey, is it unfair to piss off your fan? You used to play in a giant bass pro shops. That's how much your city thinks of you. You fired Fizdale, tanked the hell out of the 2017 season, lost the lottery, and only got the fourth pick, barely missing on Doncic and taking Jaron Jackson instead of Trey Young. That's almost as bad as giving Darko Milicic money, which you did for three years. Just when you were starting to make a push, the universe caught on and decided a pandemic was better than the Kings in the playoffs. This is a team that passed on Luka Doncic because Vladi and his dad apparently have a beef that's older than Buddy Heald's real age. Yeah, that dude is long in the tooth, to say the least. Let's look at your pathetic player acquisition history. Trading for Derek Williams, Jimmer Fredette, Willie Cauley-Stein? Do I need to go way back to drafting out of service Purvis number one overall and then giving up on him after only one year? God really does hate the Kings. Ah, the Kings of the Desert, the Phoenix Suns. DeAndre Ayton's PED suspension was a huge wake-up call for the league that, yes, this team still exists. Ricky Rubio is the second highest paid player, showing the team's financial side is as sturdy as this country's economy. Remember that time you got Shaquille O'Neal and missed the playoffs? Then you went from Nash, Marion, Stott, and Shaq to three point guards. Too bad none of this is more triggering than me just saying Robert Sarver. Nikola Jokic is the softest player in the NBA. Literally, the guy looks like a Krispy Kreme donut. After getting called possibly the worst two seed of all time, you went out and proved him right by shitting the bed against the Blazers in seven. Remember how bad Nicholas Schitzvili was? 3.2 points per game bad. It's moves like that that have kept you from not making a finals, ever. 
Oh, you flexed on us for all that time when your owner was doing interviews dunking on the world about how you were building an unstoppable juggernaut light years ahead of everybody. Well, Kevin Durant leaves, Klay Thompson gets hurt trying to Superman the rim, and Steph Curry immediately fakes an injury until he gets to play with whoever the draft lottery is rigged for them to get. Unfortunately, it's probably going to be LaMelo Ball. You should have easily won five straight, instead your era ended with only three, two of them snake bitten. The bandwagon has left Oakland with the brand new empty arena. Someone make sure James Harden is staying home because he ignores all the rules against traveling. The only thing uglier than Russell Westbrook's three point percentage is Harden without a beard. I'd tell that joke 27 times in a row if I could. You know what's worse than missing a bunch of threes? What happened the year before when you had a chance to shed that choker label and CP3 had to be sacrificed to the basketball gods. You are so unmemorable, I almost forgot to put you in this triggering. Legit, I had to go back and include you after I uploaded. Whoops. Why is your state so starved for basketball, yet you suck at it both in the pros and in college? Is it perhaps that you replaced Paul George with Victor Oladipo and Lamb Sanity? Or was it because you traded Kawhi Leonard for George Hill? One last dig. You know you could have had MJ, right? The pick used to take Sam Bowie. Well, Portland got that from the Pacers. Or some guy named Tom Owens. Damn, son. Unfortunately, the Wizards will not be receiving a bailout for the John Wall contract. The only thing more ridiculous than paying him all that money is JaVale McGee's antics when he was on your team. They're basically holding Bradley Beal hostage, needlessly hoarding him like toilet paper. Oh, that look on his face is just sad. How many times do we have to hear that Jason Tatum tweeted at LeBron when he was 14? Then Big Bron proceeded to treat him like he was 14 in the 2018 Eastern Conference Finals. He did better the following year, which was the opposite of what ML Carr did when he was your coach. The only thing worse than his coaching was his moves as GM, but at least he didn't keep the big three around until they were being wheeled out there because of a leaky anus. All respect to the Lakers, who lost a franchise great and basketball legend in a horrible tragedy. That is not subject to roasting. What is, though, is bringing in LeBron, who only came to you to pursue his best role, pretending he is not past his prime, and pairing him with... Lance Stevenson, then talking major shit and not making the playoffs. Did Troy Dan delete that tweet because I think he owes me 20 bucks? How about Magic getting played by the Pelicans? Him quitting via TikTok would have been more respectable than just telling the media he had enough of the Buzz family. Then after quitting, they still end up with Davis and all seems to be on track, but then the lockdown hit and there might not even be a playoffs. That's even shittier than Kyle Kuzma's decline into suckitude. It's sad to think that the only thing that is going to save this franchise is the cor Okay, we're not going to go there, and I don't wish that upon anyone but this guy. But I will say this offseason was so filled with hope. It was to bring in KD, Kyrie, and Zion Williamson. Banners were being printed for both Times Square and the rafters. Instead, Julius Randle and a dick punch so hard you could literally feel it. Couple that with Dolan banning fans, banning legends like Oakley from the guard, and trading the best player the franchise has seen in decades, pissing off Spike Lee nearly 50 years of torment. That's worse than Patrick Ewing missing a wide open layup. Seriously, Honestly, the New York Knicks. What can you say about Joel Embiid other than that his McDonald's and candy quarantine diet will probably ruin the offensive spacing when they come back? What are you going to do about that joke? Cry about it? And for everyone who has given me shit about the process, your clapbacks have been about as accurate and as likely as a Ben Simmons 3 or a Markel Fultz free throw. The process you seem to so deeply stand has yielded two playoff series wins and judging by your 39 and 26 record this season, each bounce of this shot was a tap on the nail that put an end to your bullshit system. And finally, your defending champs the Toronto Raptors. Oh, did you think climbing the mountain and ending all those years of frustration of being a lowly expansion team that never got to a finals would exempt you from this list? 
First of all, you had to have your team owner shipped out west to live out his Hollywood aspirations. Okay, then you had to be gifted there. the best player in the NBA, and as soon as he bookended his stint with awkward laughs, he was out of the north faster than a dollar bill about to contract chlamydia in a stripper's G-string. Don't forget that you drafted Andrea Bargnani with the number one overall pick after contracting European fever. Somehow, after losing Kawhi, you were having a decent season, but you're probably the Greek freak's new piece of sardine oil covered meat you better hope he leaves too well there you have it hopefully everyone is angered and nobody is happy well nobody is happy anyways not having sports seriously sucks so we're all in this together i guess that's how unity works well i hope you enjoyed this video please subscribe to my channel for more sports facts and bad jokes i'm five points vids and you made it to the end of this video